Good morning. Good morning, Ham, Pastor Nate. I'm glad to be here. I hope you are too. Um, even if you're not glad to be here, you're going you're gonna to be glad of what you hear today. Uh, the Word of God that is uh, it's a lamp, it's a light, but it's a correction, it's a health, it's um, even uh, just, it's just so many things. It's right what you need when you need it because we serve a good, good Father. I want to just start uh, today. Um, we're going to continue in, you're saying, a series, really all of January to me. I didn't start it out this way, um, but it, it's a, been a series. Um, we were in the last part of the year, we were talking about gifts, spiritual gifts, and we were kind of laying a foundation to begin to talk about that and uh, the gifts that were given to the church to where it's not just like um, some make-believe thing, like that we come, but there's just a form, but no power. Um, and so we have to, these are things that need to be taught on uh, so that we'd have understanding because how many of you know what's not taught on, you don't understand um, there's kids that don't understand what a uh, Phillips screwdriver is because nobody taught them. Um, there's kids that don't know how to wipe a table because nobody taught them. Uh, there are kids, adults, that don't know how to sit through a service, a wedding, a funeral because nobody taught them. Like, like they, so like even just this basic thing of what honor is. Or what a Phillips is, or what a how to change the how to jump a car. Some of you don't know how to jump a car. Why? Nobody taught you. Some 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 in this day and age, there's a lot of things that aren't taught that once maybe were taught. I mean, the the place that we're in in this generation really has to do with the lack of fathering, the lack of parenting. I'm talking just as people and generations. You know, if you can go back to the, to the 70s when there was this great rebellion, in a sense, this cultural rebellion, and it just where hearts of fathers and children were kind of turned against or, or away from one another. Things weren't passed down the way they once were. You know, even to the point of like, maybe you were a bricklayer, Kyle, and then your kid would maybe become a bricklayer, and then they'd become a bricklayer, and they'd become a bricklayer, and, they, and that's just that just was part of honor, part of training your children, Part of a gift that God had given you, and you pass it on, right? And, but we know that you know. So and so there's those. The, maybe that's the old way. But how many of you know there are some old ways that are actually the right ways? How many of you know when you stand at these all these decisions times, which we're in? The Bible tells us like when you stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient path. Ask for like you know. So there was wisdom um, uh, way back there before we became so. Um, uh, before knowledge became so great that we, we decided we could just do it on our own. As technology, not just technology, but healthcare has increased, prayer has decreased, right? It's the last resort instead of the first. Uh, it's where miracles and signs and wonders, um, they lessen because you don't need them because you can do it on your own. It's, we, we, we were talking really last year, talking again, I'm talking about how, I, how we were in this series on gifts, okay? And I wanted to go further, but we, we couldn't just get there just yet. And, um, and right before the series on gifts, I was, was talking a lot to you guys about prayer and how so many times we just think if we had a little more time, a little bit more money, we could do it. We could get what we need. And so just this lack of, because we live in this first world where everything is so available, and we live in houses, and, and, and you know, since I'm you know, basically pulling from you know, Old Testament here, we live in houses that we didn't build and vineyards that we didn't plant. In other words, the goodness of God, the promises have been just so abundant, it's easy to forget the Lord your God. And so how many of you know when you forget the Lord your God, it, it's some, and, and it's not just one generation, it's the next generation, it's the next generation, there are things that you don't even have a clue on, and neither does mom and dad. And neither does that mom and dad, but the, the, your grandfathers once knew. But it wasn't passed down. And I, I, I believe there's things in, in, in the Word of God that have always been there that are just being brought back again. I know um, uh, where, where we went to Bible school, um, uh, he, Brother Hagen would say this, the, spirit, the move of the Spirit could be lost in one generation. In other words, where it can be lost. But I believe even the Bible tells us that this is where I want to kind of maybe... Is, uh, maybe not start off, so this is not necessarily part of the message, but kind of is. Um, but in, in Malachi chapter 4, verse 6, it says, this is before the turn, return of the Lord. God's going to return the father's hearts to their children. This is Malachi 4, 6, but also the 
the children's hearts to their fathers. So there's a, there, what's happening here is you have fathers beginning to father again or train again instead of neglect. But you also have children who are beginning to learn and honor and say, yeah, yeah okay, what, what, daddy? You know, there was a time where in every child's life, um, if, if it was a healthy home, um, where you thought your dad could do anything. Oops, sorry. I'm going to have to walk around the front of the stage today. So, um, You thought your dad could do anything. I remember, uh, I have three boys. I remember um, so many times, the first one hopping on my back, the next one hopping on his back, and the next one hopping on their back, and I'm carrying all three upstairs to go. And they just thought I was the strongest guy ever. Now they think they can take me, but we all know that's not true. Isn't that right? It's not even close. Two seconds, right? Um, but there was a time where there was just this great honor, and, and it was as a kid. But how many of you know, it's not just when, 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 you're, when you're two and three and four and five and six, you, a father can instill simple, this much truths. But when you're 14 and 15 and 16 and 17, your father can instill a whole lot more if... His heart is turned toward you to teach, and if the child's heart is turned toward them to hear. You know, the Bible tells us, and we were talking about this a little bit earlier in the, in the year, if it, today, this is in Hebrews, and it's talking about how there remains a rest, right, for the people of God. He says, today, if you'll, heart, if you'll hear his voice and harden not your hearts. So it's not just enough to hear God's voice. It's not just enough to hear your father's voice. It is also the condition of your heart when you hear, or the, and let me just say it this way, it's not so much the condition as it is the position. Our hardening of our heart is not, a lot of times it's not the condition, it's the position in which we hold con- concerning who's talking. As a father, now, we're the mom and dad, how many of you as teenagers thought this at times? Mom and dad don't know. Raise your hand. Okay, every teenager, my, myself included. There'll come a day when you realize how much mom and dad did know. It's what you, the older you get, you realize how much they did know. Um, but but it, that, that hardening of heart was not so much the condition that the, your, your child or you had a bad heart, but it was the position that you held over your mother and father's word. Your way was a higher way. And so the word, could, though we heard the word, the hardening of the heart, it couldn't get in there right? The word, it was, it was resisted, right? And he tells us that if you'll hear his word and you'll harden not his heart, you won't follow the same course of disobedience, okay? And so this morning we're in this, uh, again, last year we were talking about gifts, but before we came in and I wanted to get back to that here this year because it's important that we learn some things that we just don't know and that nobody's taught us before, or maybe we've seen, but there's been a lot of questions on. And actually, this has been a desire of my heart for many years, and even to the point of I've asked uh, different spiritual... uh, We just went down to a birthday of of a spiritual father in my life, um, Mark Hankins. He turned 70. So we got to fly down there just this last week, or a week and a half ago now. I don't know. It's been been crazy. A lot of lots going on. But... um, I remember asking, you know, just so desiring in my heart for somebody to teach me how to change the spiritual oil, right? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Somebody to show you how to work that tool or, or run a chainsaw. Anybody ever run a chainsaw? It's extremely dangerous, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Um, if you don't have somebody that has been there and fell a few trees, or it means cut it down, and know how to notch them in whatever, it'll kick. I mean, people lose their lives, Right? because they didn't have a little bit of wisdom. And I remember even uh, in the back, I got Mr. Mr. Jack, uh, Jack Aikman. I remember when I was probably uh, early 20s, um, so I, it's been a, a number of years ago. I was probably, probably 15 years ago. Uh, he came over to my previous house, and we were doing some tree cutting. Then he came, and he was, he was outworking me, right? And, um, but I remember him scolding me about the way that I did something with the chainsaw. And, uh, and he said something pretty curt, right? Like pretty like, hey, you know, like that kind of. And I, was, it, I had an under, understanding, though, that what he was saying to me, it wasn't like, who do you think you are? It was like, I didn't even know. I, di- I didn't know that. 
I didn't know that that, he said, yeah, and da da da, da because the chain could pop, and, you, and da, you never, never, you never, and so guess what, that has become part of my, you never to my boys, right, and even to the point where he had these chaps, right, and he said this, you need to get you a pair of chaps too if you're going to be doing all this cutting, um, and so I bought me a pair of chaps, he said they're kind of expensive, but get the good ones because your leg is worth more than that, right, so since that time, I, if I'm going to run the saw, I'm going to put on chaps, okay? Only, well, is, that, is that being, well, I could do it on my own. I, could, I probably could cut a tree. I haven't had the chain fly off and hit me in the leg yet, okay? I, I actually have a, one nick on my knee of the chaps where it could have went further, you know? That's just listening and hearing. So what we're talking about tonight or today is we're talking about hearing from our fathers, hearing words again, and having uh, this heart where, and this, I, I believe God's doing this. I believe he is in, the t- in the t- Malachi chapter 4, 6, where the father's hearts are being turned to the children, and the children's hearts are being turned to their father. And I, I want to say that naturally, but I, I especially want to say that as the children of God, as a child of God, I believe there's hearts of children that are turned to their fathers, the, the father, and there's this, there's this teaching and instilling of things that, that maybe generations hadn't known because there hadn't been hearts turned. There's been a resisting of I know better and all these kind of things. And so this, this month, um, as we, we, were, we started out the year January 1, obviously, um, but it was on a Sunday morning, and uh, we just talked about firsts, firsts. And since that time, um, it wasn't just Sunday morning. It was Sunday morning and Wednesday night, and Sunday morning and Wednesday night, and Sunday morning and Wednesday night, um, and that, that has been going on up to this time. And every one of those messages has all been about first, and all been about getting some things in order. And um, if you're here this morning, I'm thankful that you're here, but if you haven't been here the other days and you haven't listened, um, then you, you, you're missing pieces. You're missing pieces. If you have been here on Wednesday night and you haven't been and you haven't heard the thing that the, the things that have been taught, I'm telling you, you're missing pieces to what we're talking about and what um, which lay in a foundation. Um, just so, some some so basic truths that will really help you and me. Okay, and so um, I'd encourage you to go back and listen to those. Put that on in your car. Put it down on uh, in the evening instead of putting on whatever else and, and vegging out. Put feed your spirit, man. Uh, and you'll be so glad that you did. And the Lord will speak because, see, when you honor the Lord, he, he honors you, right? And, and so I believe that that's what God is wanting to do. And so this morning, um, the, the title of the, that I, I would title this message, um, I could, I, I, it actually probably took me 30 minutes to title this message. And then I ended up just with this one, which is <laughs> obedience and sacrifice, Obedience and sacrifice, and the reason why it took me so long is because obedience, not obedience or sacrifice, it's obedience and sacrifice, but really, they, both of those things have their roots in something else, and that's honor, and that's honor, and so really what I'm talking about is we're still in this first, first, we're talking about first, and if you want to end up in the place where you're winning in life, um, to where it's not just you trying to do it, but the Bible tells us in, in 1 Samuel 2.30, I will honor those who honor me, right? I will honor those who honor me, um, but those who are lightly esteem me, you know, will be lightly esteemed. In this passage um, in, in 1 Samuel 2, he's talking to Eli, who was a priest, and how the things in the house of God were not honored as they once should be, or what they once were. And so the, the things in the house of God had fallen, you know, to the level of movie theater. <laughs> okay? This is not a movie theater. Like when we come together, this is not a movie theater. You're not here to be entertained. We're here to hear from the Lord. We're here to meet with him. We're here, and we, when we come to the house of, of the Lord, we come to bring him something. Not just, Lord, give me something. He, he's not a vending machine. He's not. Um, he is one that's worthy of all honor and all praise. And I love how David, a man after God's own heart, in 2 Samuel, in uh, 24, 24, so every 20, 24 hours, 24, and the next 24, and the next 24, but it's 2 Samuel 24, 24, he said, I will not offer, offer the Lord anything that costs me nothing. 
And this is a man that God called a man after his own heart. And so we're going to talk this morning um, along the lines really of honor and obedience and sacrifice. We're going to look primarily at two passages in 1 Samuel 15, but also Malachi. Now, Malachi, um, for whatever reason, not for whatever reason, I know what reason, um, has a connotation in the church, the book of Malachi. It's the last book in the Old Testament of just about money. When I say Malachi chapter 3, maybe some of you would be able to say, oh, here we go again. This, there's just this, under, there's this underlying deception that um, Malachi and the book of Malachi is about money. It's not at all about money. It's actually 1 Samuel 2.30 all over again, where God's having to bring correction to the house of God. Because of the, the way that the house of God, um, and so he's not able, the same way when Jesus went to his hometown, what he desired to do, uh, he can't do. Because otherwise you would be, in a sense, being able, uh, you would be, re, in a sense, quote unquote, rewarded for your way <laughs> instead of his way. But his way is the right way. And so he's bringing correction because he so longs to move and be in his house again. That's, and I believe that this is where, like, even in these, these first and these order, this message, this is, it's, a, to, it's, it's like, I, people go to the chiropractor all the time, and they pay to what? To get corrected. And, um, and I, I believe that's what is, there's just alignment going on, getting things in order and first, and, and just us seeing, like, oh, wow, thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord. Because he's, he's desiring to honor us. He's desiring for you and me to walk in the good in favor. Now, think about this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 tells us this, that, that, um, that you are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. So you, you, he made you. You're not accident. You're not an accident. You, he made you, and he formed you. But he not, didn't just form you. He prepared good things for you to walk in. So for you and me to walk in the good things where he has already honored us, put us, even put us first, even thought thought of us beforehand and made ready these things, for me and you to walk in those, or you and I to walk in those things, it's going to be you and I coming under what he says. When you and I come under what he says, what happens is, is we get to walk in the good, the things that he's prepared for us. We get to walk in favor. Favor changes all the rules. We get to walk in a place of where God honors us. Oh, my, can you imagine? Just, just wow. Just because of coming under his word and knowing and seeing him um, as good. I, I want to, um, last night we were watching, I think this fits, is very fitting little story here. Last night we were watching uh, America's Funniest Home Videos. They're not as good as they used to be, straight up. Like back in the day, when, you know, and, and we have phones, like we have phones, so there should be just like a, so many things. But everyone's using their great things for YouTube channels to try to make money. And America's Funny, 10,000? Nah, I don't want that, right? Anyway, but one of the store, one of the, the little short videos last night was um, uh, this this lady uh, had put paper on the floor in the house, okay, paper on the floor, ju- garbage on the floor in the house, and her little girls, or her young teenage girls, walked over the trash countless times, over and over and over again, and finally the mom said. I guess I'll pick it up myself. And she picks it up, and on the bottom of the paper in the trash is money. And so many times we hear mom and dad's voice. Like I, have a, I have a young one that I, I, a lot of times I'll say, hey. And I know he's right there listening. I know. But he might think I'm going to ask him to take out the trash. Or might think... I mean, this happens with my boys all the time. They're maybe in the middle of Fortnite or doing something that they want to do. This is, right? And you hear this, and you're like, I wonder what he's calling for. Because I don't think he's calling to give me money. So I'm going to wait and see. Right? So just how we view uh, our, our parents' will and word for us has a lot to do with what we do or don't do. Right? So the character, of the, how we see our, the, our father's character, this is why Satan attacks the character of God first and foremost, okay? All the way in, in the garden, because your and my choice is so attached to what we believe the character of God is. 
You're my choice. Right now, you have a choice to choose God's way or your way. But what we believe about God has so much to do with what we choose or don't choose. Period. And so we're going to pick up today um, in, in 1 Samuel. Uh, 1 Samuel. And I, I, I thought I should just teach without even using notes today because I, didn't, I don't know that I can follow them. Um, and so I want to, this is the story of Saul, an anointed chosen one of God. Anointed, chosen, one of God. Did you know you're chosen? And there's this, what you're going to see here is, I think that we, some of the stuff that we see in, in us and in the church, where we, where we celebrate, we celebrate sacrifice and disregard obedience. We celebrate sacrifice, but we disregard obedience. In the church, we celebrate the sacrifice of Christ that costs you how much? Nothing. Costs you nothing. The blood of Jesus that we're singing about today costs you nothing. It was offered to you. But there is a cost and there is to be a cost in in our lives daily. And that is that I would offer the Lord a what? My body as how? How? A living sacrifice, which is just reasonable and acceptable. Like this is the most big service that we're, we're to offer. This is Romans. So, so, but, but so many times what happens is, is we, we celebrate a sacrifice and disregard obedience to the point that we, God, God's, God says something to us, right? Like a direction. Hey, I want you to get up and I want you to spend some time in the word, Drew. Okay. And, and so Drew's like, okay, I'm going to do that. But then he wants to hang out late at night with his new fiance, right? So that's awesome. I'm just giving, making a, just, a, 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 just this story up, okay? And so you know in your heart what the Lord said. But you've chosen to do that. And so you get tired. And then and you get tired. And then, you know, you stick with some certain things for just a little bit. And then after that, you're like, ah, you just, you're just so far behind. You're just going to quit. God didn't change his direction. Okay, but 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 next time you talk with the Lord, you say, well, I was at church on Wednesday and I was at church on Sunday. And look what I've done. And look, I'm giving. Look at the sacrifices I'm making. Is that what God asked for? What did he ask? For you, he, again, direction to you. If the Lord tells you to go to somebody and, and apologize, buying them a fruit basket doesn't cut it. <laughs> and then I celebrate, Lord, did you not know that I sent $100 on that fruit basket? He doesn't care. Did, do you think Cain and Abel? Cain and Abel, you remember in the, in the beginning, all the way from you go to Genesis in the tree of the, gar, in the, in the garden with the, the tree, God was giving a choice. My word or your word? Do you think that Cain brought junky vegetables, rotten vegetables? No. No. But what did the Lord ask? He said, I want your first, not in the process of time. So it had nothing to do with the fact, I don't think it had to do with what he brought or didn't bring. It's, it's when, it, who, whose word is going to be first in my life? Now, let's read this. And um, again, 1 Samuel, a king. It says, then Samuel, and so I'm gonna, we're going to read a couple passages uh, this morning, and we'll just, we'll just speak to them. I, I believe that this is so helpful for me. It's been so helpful for me because um, it, causes you, it just causes me to be in that place of walking in what God's prepared for me. Oh, man, I'm telling you, you talk about good things. You talk about just where you just get to say, oh, look what the Lord's done. You get to just talk about just his goodness, and many, many people see uh, just what, what's going on. And I really, I, I can't get into this really much this morning, but I, I, I would please go back and listen to Wednesday night. We talk, uh, talked about mirror, mirror, talking about how the word is the very thing, why it's so important, because it's the only thing that allows us to see ourselves. I can't see 
I can't, in order for me to see myself, I can't, I got to have something that it has a reflection and shows me my true me. And, and it's truth. And it doesn't tell me just make believe things. It tells me the truth. It tells me that there are things I need to make an adjustment on. It doesn't just patty cake me down the road, right? The truth. Now, now in, in churches, pastors will patty cake you down the road. Some pastors, because of pressure, financial pressure, people that are going to give. I can't talk about this because, because their family does this. Or I can't talk about it. And they're one of the biggest givers. And, and, they, and I know it. And not only that, they bought me this. And it's crazy that these things happen, right? The pressures of the bills and all the kind of, if I do this. And, and so you're just Pinocchioed, puppeted. It's garbage. And the Lord's like, who's the Lord of the house? This is that 2 Samuel, or 1 Samuel 2.30. Who is, who is to be honored, Eli? And this is also Malachi talking, hey, what's going on? What's going on? Do you know who I am? Okay. Now, then Saul, again, 1 Samuel 15. All right, then Samuel said to Saul, the Lord sent uh, me to anoint you king over his people Israel. Now, therefore, listen to the words of the Lord. This is what the Lord of hosts says. I witnessed what the Amalekites did to the Israelites when they ambushed them on their way from Egypt. Now go and attack the Amalekites and, uh, and, devote, uh, and devote to destruction all that belongs to them. Do not spare them, but put to death men, women, children, infants, oxen, uh, sheep, camels, and donkeys. So Saul summoned the troops and ordered them at uh, Telaim. 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men of Judah. Saul came to the city of Amalek and lay in wait in the valley. And he warned the uh, Kenites, since you have showed kindness to all the Israelites when they came out of Egypt, go on and get away from the Amalekites. Otherwise, I will sweep you away with them. So the Kenites um, moved away from the Amalekites and then Saul struck down the Amalekites all the way uh, from H- Havilah to Shur, which is east of Egypt, he captured, he captured Agag, Agag, king of Amalek, alive, but devoted all the others to destruction with the sword. Saul and his troops spared Agag, Agag, Agag um, along with the best of the sheep and cattle and the fat calves and lambs and the best of everything else. They were unwilling They were unwilling. They were unwilling to destroy them. But they devoted to destruction all that was despised or worthless. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. So Samuel's not there. The Lord says, Samuel. He said, I regret that I have made Saul king, for he has turned away from following me. And he's not carrying out my instructions. And Samuel was distressed and cried out to the Lord all that night. Early in the morning, Saul got up to confront Saul, or early in the morning, Samuel got up to confront Saul, but he was told Saul had gone uh, to get some caramel. <laughs> and behold, actually, he went to a town, all right, this is the mountain, all right. And behold, he had set up a monument for himself. Wow. Wow, look at me. We're kind of in that selfie stage, aren't we? You've got to watch that selfie stuff. You really do. You've got to watch your duck lips and your chest, ladies. You're advertising. If you spend some time in here, you'll see what a, wo- what a woman is how, and how they're to adorn themselves. Now, it's interesting. It doesn't tell guys, put on, don't put on the extra tight pants, and the, but it tells women some of these kind of things. You've got to watch these kind of things because what happens is we can get, even in the place where we were once to nurture and raise our children in the admonition of the Lord, no longer does God's word hold that authority in our life because, well... We're looking at us all the time. There's monuments set up in our lives. 
And if I'm going to be with those people, then I got to and, and be, be known this way and be this popular. Well, then I need to be over here and I need to be over here and I need to have this and I need to have that. Watch out. Watch out. Because you might just be pulling a saw here, setting up a, a monument. Now listen to this. But, but here's what you're going to make sure and say, make this statement. You're going to talk about all that you sacrifice. Because this is what he's fixing to say. And I'm not just hammering women here. I'm talking to all of us. When the Lord asks you to give something, not just in the church, but to somebody. He wants you to give them something, and it might be something that is actually a sacrifice. But instead of giving what he's asked, we give them something else, kind of like Ananias and Sapphira. You remember, they gave some money, but the Lord said this, or they, said, they, they, they basically lied. But they're celebrating their sacrifice, all while neglecting any attention to what? Obedience. But see, obedience is what was, was to position the land and the people and their family and their children's children in a place of God's honor in their life and God working for them to where they weren't outside of, outside of him and therefore puffed up and doing things all their own way. And it, it, it was obedience. Obedience is so, if I, if I could tell you this, obedience is so important Obedience is so important. What we talked about on Wednesday is, is these, these two laws and laws or commands. And I want us to hear it as authority, commands. God gave us some commands, and it was this, two of them that take care of everything else. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. And then the second one is just like it or like unto it, and that is love your neighbor as yourself. What does it mean to love? Well, Love is one of the most overused, misunderstood words and ever-changing, evolving words in our culture. And yet God is love, and, and, and he doesn't change. So the word love must have a foundation and a root that never changes. And it does. And, and, and the most basic uh, definition would be this, God's moral preference or God's preference. Did you know that the word love, you, we all often call agape, agape, it comes after agapeo, where they begin, which, why? Because that's the noun of the action. In order, he's describing something that, that originated as an action. If you were to look this up in the strong, you'll see it's 25 uh, is agapeo, and then 26 is agape, which is love, love as noun. The first one is love as action. And it, it literally means this. It means to choose, to, to, to walk in love means to choose what God chooses. So if I'm going to walk in love, if I'm going to love the Lord, you know how I do it? I, I choose what he chooses. But in order to choose what he chooses, I must discover what he says. You want to get to know somebody? Find out what they like. Isn't that true? Fine. You want to get, to get, get, get intimate with somebody? Hey, what do you like? Hey, and you, you just conversations about what, 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 what do they like? You know, you, that's what God wants us to know him and to love him. You know, how, you know how you get to know him? Find out what he likes. What's your preference here, Lord? What's your preference to how to treat Ben? What's your preference on how to treat them? What's your preference on how to treat you? And then choose what he prefers. And that would be called um, Honor. But, but once you hear what he's directing you, that also be obedience. And there will be a requirement of some sacrifice. But it's not sacrifice as you and I think sacrifice, because what I lay down, the Lord adds back to me. It, but so many times our view is only these 80, 90, 120 years that we have on this earth. And so when I lay something down, I'm thinking, all I can see is just this much, but my greatest rewards are ones that I haven't received yet and won't receive on this, on this earth. There's crowns, there's gifts that those who, he says that those who fought to the end and held to my word until the end, he said there's crowns for you, there's rewards. There's a fight to hold on to God's direction and, your, and, and his word to us 
and to, 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 to say, I'm going to obey that. And when I miss it, my heart, just as David, when he said, I'm going to offer the Lord that nothing that costs me nothing, that my heart is grieved and I would surrender or offer my body or offer something as a sacrifice to the Lord to be, in a sense, put myself back and say, Lord, again, this is 1 John 1, 9. If your heart's... Con- you confess your sin. You say, Lord, you come to that. You come to him and you, 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 your heart is grieved. And you say, Lord, I, not only do I, did I miss the mark, but my in- intention is, Lord, for me to shoot for the mark that you set before me. Now, let's keep on going here. Um, so in uh, 1 Samuel 15, 10, um, uh, let me go to verse 12, 15, 12. It says, so early in the morning, Saul got up to confront, or Samuel got up to confront Saul. But he was told Saul had to go, uh, gone to Carmel, or, or Carmel, I don't know which one it is. And behold, he ha- has set up a monument for himself and has turned and gone down to Gilgal. When Samuel reached him, Saul said to him, Oh, the Lord bless you. I've carried out the Lord's instructions. It's amazing how how, how we can be blinded. Blinded when we don't hold the word of God as authority in our life. Didn't we read this in James before? He says that that, um, he that hears the word but doesn't do the word is like a man who look, once looked in the mirror and yet walks away and completely forgets what manner of man he was. Blind, completely forget. What is that? Not looking into the place that actually shows you. Like God's word is authority. It wasn't Saul's authority. Okay, so he says, um, uh, again, verse 13, when Samuel reached him, Saul said to him, may the Lord bless you. I've carried out the Lord's instructions. But Samuel replied, then what is the bleeding of sheep? And the lowing of cattle that I hear. Why am I hearing cattle? Why am I hearing these sheep? If you follow the Lord's instruction. Uh, Saul answered, well, the troops. But we saw that it was Saul with the troops. It was Saul commanding the troops. Okay, But the troops brought them from the Amalekites. It's amazing how when... How when you're not surrendered to, in my heart to the Lord, when I get confronted, what ends up happening is I like to blame. Now, I wanted so bad to talk about what I'm going to be speaking on next week, which is how iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. You know what sharpens you? Is somebody's, somebody else holding you accountable, and you know what? It might rub you the wrong way. It might rub you the wrong way, and you might want to make an excuse when somebody says, hey, as you, like in Hebrews, it says, as you see the day approaching, gather all the more. Hey, man, I haven't seen you in a while. Where have you been? Oh, blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, hey, I just, I've been missing you. You know, this is what the Word says. It's okay to tell somebody what the Word says, because they, they said they want to put God first, so it's okay, because what happens is, is we might get rubbed the wrong way, but it actually might be the very thing that sharpens us for you and me to get into that place and be ready for battle. There's nothing worse than be, having something dull. You work so hard in life, like it's like trying to sharpen the ax before you swing it at the tree, right? I mean, so much of our lives is spent with just so much effort because of simply not being sharp. Because we, we, for some reason, we're in this politically correct culture that we're in. We love our, and we love ourselves more than we love others. We're, we don't want to tell somebody something or in love and, and encourage them. And, and as iron sharpens iron, so sharpen one another, lest they get mad at me or get offended with me. But yet, it's the very thing that he says is to keep us sharp is where you ask somebody when they're in the deer stand, how's that Bible reading going? You know, it's kind of like, ah, okay. No, seriously. How, how, how's that going? It's okay to ask that. It's okay to, to accountability. This is what his discipleship is. Jesus corrected his disciples. The word of God always, but he encouraged and, 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 and empowered them as well, all of it together. He loved them. He prayed for them. 
right? Okay, so he says this. So I'll reach out to, and he said, um, what is this? What, verse 15, Samuel answered, the troops brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best, uh, and uh, sheep and cattle, the sacrifice to the Lord, your God. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? The Lord, who's God? So let me ask you this. So what we're seeing here is what Jesus said, and you might have read if you've been reading with us in the New Testament, if you love me, you will keep my, my words, my commands. That's kind of stout, isn't it? The Lord your God. So let me ask you this. If, if I'm not willing, if I'm not willing, what we just... You could, you could highlight and circle, and, and the Holy Spirit will speak to you. It, just just go, go read this yourself and let the Lord talk to you. But, but whose who's God are you serving here today? Pastor Nate's? Or yours? It's my God. It's my God, and my God, what he, his word is final authority in my life. So when I open this word and I see something... That he shows me, listen, you don't have to get everything right. You don't have to be every, everything perfect. You just have to do what he's telling you to do. Just come under. It's not a hard, laborsome thing. Let him lead you. And what happens is we'll be changed. We'll be from one degree of glory to, as we behold this. See, it's not our working, it's our coming under. He gives us both the will and the desire to do. It's like, Lord, you know what? I see this, I, and I hear you speak into my heart. I, 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 there, there is a, not a condemnation, but a conviction. In other words, the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us, he doesn't con condemn, but he does convict. He does say this. There's evidence here that says this, and you say, I see that. Lord, thank you for that. And thank you that you also give me the, the, the grace for the desire to, to will and to do according to your pleasure. Lord, I'm going to, I yield to you. I yield to you. I yield to you. You know one of the most powerful prayers is a prayer that sometimes gets prayed at the end of a church service, and that's this prayer of consecration. Really, when, when you, the prayer of salvation is actually the prayer of consecration, but so many times we've called it the prayer of salvation that we don't, we don't actually um, articulate what it is that you're laying down. And that is myself for him. Because maybe we can't get maybe we can't get the numbers where they need to be if we don't articulate if we articulate too much. They'll get it eventually. Really? Because what happens is when I lay myself down and I, and I come unto, unto him, all of a sudden now what happens is I realize really that as, his, as I'm his, he's also caring for me. So a lot of the cares that people are carrying in this life really just stem from the, the weak salvation message instead of in sal weak salvation prayers rather than the prayer of salvation, which is truly a prayer of consecration, which where you and I come under his lordship and him as Lord and Father, all those things, and he tends to me. But yet I'm his. Oh, thank you, Father. He, you know, like, and then you can go back to Matthew chapter 6, and he says, aren't you more valuable than the birds? Or the, the flowers. You're not to be caring for these things. And you don't even have to know all of what's up ahead up there. You know what you need to do? Is just take my yoke upon you. Because my burden is easy. My yoke is light. Come learn of me. This is what he says. Come learn of me. And you will find rest for your souls. Come learn of me. Lord, what do you say? So you're dealing with your kids. Okay? Maybe you're parenting teenagers. Maybe you, and you're just freaking out because of blah, 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 and you're just losing it. Well, you can continue to lose it, or you can come away, and you say, Lord, what do you say about this? And then you can come under that word, and peace can reign, and he can work. Peace can reign, and he can work. Because I ceased from my, my, in a sense, my way, my work. Okay, my way, my work. His way, his work. Okay, 
This is, this is, and this is all scripture and very scriptural, okay? It'll help you, you and me. So Saul, going back to uh, 15, um, 15, verse, uh, verse 16, Samuel tells him, um, stop it or shut it or stop. Just, just be quiet, Saul. Shut up. I'm done hearing your garbage. You're in, you're in, you can't even see. You're so in such denial. He says, let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. He said, I will, I will, I will not return with you, Samuel replied, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and he has rejected you as king of Israel. As Samuel turned to go, Saul grabbed the hem of his robe and and it tore. So Samuel said to him, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and he has given it to your neighbor who is better than you. Moreover, the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind for he is not a man that he should uh, change his mind. The the glory of Israel. I love that. Anyway, um, he doesn't change his mind. He's, and so Paul, now Saul is saying, I've sinned, Saul replied. Please honor me now before the elders of my people and before Israel. Come back with me so that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel went back with Saul, uh, and Saul worshiped the Lord. And uh, I don't know why. I think I, I skipped something. Um, anyway, let's keep going here. And so Saul then Samuel said, uh, bring me Agog, king of the Amalekites. Da, 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 da. Thank you, Lord. Where is that? Did I flip two pages? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm like, this is like, I've lost here. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what? Okay. Stop it, exclaimed Samuel. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied. <laughs> oh, this is right. Yeah, Okay. I'm like, what happened? I, I know you get to that, but like we jumped. He said, he said, let me tell you what the Lord told me last night. Can you just hear? Tell me. Tell me. Here, let me, let me just come. Go ahead and tell me. God, it's, it's such a... And Samuel said, although you were once small in your own eyes, have you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel and sent you on a mission saying, go and devote to destruction the sinful Amalekites. Fight against them until you have wiped them out. So why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you rush upon the plunder and do evil in the sight of the Lord? Again, in whose sight? The Lord. So is it, does it matter what your friends say? What, what really matters is what the Lord says. Because I'm sure all of his troops were like, well, yeah, you know, I think that would be okay, you know, as long as I can have one of those gold cups too. Yeah, absolutely. Every two, every, I'll take three, you take one. How's that? Oh, yeah, that's great. How we want to put people in our lives that just tell us what we want to hear. We've got to be careful for that. But I, but I did not obey the Lord, Saul replied. I went on a mission that the Lord... Uh, he, excuse me. But I did obey the Lord, Saul replied. I went on a mission that the Lord gave me, and I brought back Agag, king of Amalek, and devoted the Amalekites to destruction. Uh, the troops took the cattle or the sheep for, from the plunder and the best of the things devoted to destruction in order to sacrifice them to the Lord God at Gilgal. But, but Samuel declared, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? as much as in obedience to his voice. Behold, obedience is better than sacrifice. And uh, attentiveness is better than the fat of the rams. Attentiveness. I I love that. This is in the BSB. Attentiveness. Look and say, Lord, what do you say? Lord, I'm looking to you. Father, I look to you this, tw- in this year. Father, I look to you for my family. Father, I look to you for my finances. Father, I look to you. Lord, what do you say? That's for me and my house. We're going we're gonna to serve you, Lord. What do you say? He said that is the best thing. That is the best thing. What obedience, 
more than sacrifice. Because what happens is when I, obedience and, and sacrifice are both a result of one thing, and that's honor. Who's first? Who's first? See, obedience uh, it, it, it tells us the children obey your father and mother. You know this is right. This is the, it says honor thy father. Actually, it's honor thy father. You, I, I wish I would have pulled that up and we could read that exactly. But honor is the underlying tone that it brings about obedience and sacrifice. This is why Malachi is not about money, but it is about honor, obedience, and sacrifice. My Bible keeps turning, um, and he goes on to say. Um, uh, because you have rejected, uh, or excuse, verse 23, for rebellion is like the sin of, uh, yeah, witchcraft. I don't know what this one says. Okay, it says witchcraft there. Great. Um, it's like the sin of witchcraft and arrogance is like the wickedness of idolatry. And because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Um, just, I, I want to just go to Malachi and we'll kind of roll, th- roll through this and close this real quick. But here we, this is really the makeup of, of this whole message today. We have to see rebellion or disobedience as that word rebellion. And we have to see it as coming under witchcraft, which witchcraft is, is, is entertaining a different spirit or coming under and listening for what a different spirit says. That's what he's saying there. That's we have to call, we have to call disobedience or rebellion. We have to see it as I'm coming under a different word that does not have my well-being in mind. So many times my decisions are made from a, a perspective that I only can see right here. We make decisions and we can only see this much on our own. But God will lead you in every decision. But in order to be led, it means I'm going to have to be willing to come under. It's going to have to, I'm going to have to have the, the, the direction in my heart and the belief in my heart that, Lord, your boundaries fall for me in pleasant places. This leads me right into this next week's Bible memory verse. You know, we did Psalms 119, verse 18. Open my eyes that I might see wonderful things or wondrous things from your law. Psalms 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, this this week's memory verse is Psalms 40, verse 8. I was going to stay in Psalms 119, but this verse that I'm going to share with you, Psalms 40, verse 8, is actually quoted in just a little bit different way Seven times in Psalms 119. But I loved how Psalms 40, verse 8 said it. And it t- tells us that, God, your word is my delight. Go ahead and put it up there. Psalms 40, verse 8. I want you to see it. I delight to do your will. Because, you know, I, here I'm teaching this, this, this message about unwilling. You were unwilling. Saul, the, the word of the Lord came to Saul. You were unwilling. No, no. You know what David said? I delight to do your will. Oh, God, and your laws are within my heart. You know what that means? It wasn't hardened. See, so many times we think that, well, let me just make this clear. God isn't grading you based on performance. It's what, what's the condition? What does he look at? Your heart. Listen, you're going to fall. You're going to miss it. You got something called flesh. You have to, we have to lay down our will continually. We, we get that. What, what, what I'm, I'm asking you is check, check here today. Should we got to check here. And am I, am, I, am, I, am, I, am I celebrating my sacrifice while disregarding my obedience? I have to ask myself that because otherwise I'm deceiving myself. He said, be, James 4, be ye a doer of the word, not a hearer only, deceiving yourself. And you know what you'll find is, is when you and I put the word before us, it'll keep us, it'll guard us, and it'll show us again. And, it'll, and he's patient with us. And he's like, he, he, the comforter is the one that brings the word to us to bring correction, the Holy Spirit, the empowerer. But also, the, 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 what, he, he's the one that re- brings it back to us. This is why, apart from him, apart from him, I'm not going to make it. Amen. 
But even in the beginning was the Word, just as John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. And it, the Word. We have to be and honor the Word again. That this, this Word, I, I have this in my heart to do this year, but the, the, just talking about the authenticity of this Word. How many times it's tried to be destroyed? How many prophecies have been fulfilled? How many different writers that say this, have said the same thing? How, how, I mean, it's, it's, it, you, can't, you can't make it up. It's a- astronomically impossible. Like, like mathematically impossible. Because this is the Word of God. And this is the lamp to my feet. It is the light to my path. It's what leads me. It's what defines my future. It is also what redeems my past. His word. If his word didn't say, if he didn't say that I'm given I'm given my son, I'm loving you, I'm preferring you over my son to be a sacrifice, not to condemn the world, but that through him you might choose life. If I didn't have that, what would I have? Nothing. It's redeemed me, my, my, my past, my present, my future. It, it leads me, it guides me, it directs me. It encourages me. It takes my soul that wants to cling to dirt and mire and it puts it up where light is. The Word. First things first. Nevertheless, at your Word. God, what are you saying? What are you saying? And God's been doing that with me more and more. And, and I, I heard this, this statement recently, and it's, I've just been mulling over it because it was right along with what had been going on in my heart, having to do with authority and having to do with boldness and, and, and saying, Lord, I want to do what you're asking me to do. And I, I know that's so many hearts prayers. It's like I'm not standing up here. Like, I know that's so many hearts prayers. And I'm just like, God, I want to do I want, to, I, want to, I want to do what you're asking me to do. Like, help me to be bold and, and, and be confident, not in my own strength, but like, let me, let me like speak through me. Father, thank you that you do. You stand next to me and you give me the words to minister so that your word would be fully spoken. Thank you, Lord. Like, and I heard this statement and, and how obedience is the root. It, it's this, this foundation or how, how much, how foundation, the foundation of our boldness and our and confidence has a lot to do with our obedience. When you, when you know you're doing what the Lord's asked you to do, there's a boldness. There's a boldness because you're under a different word. I, too, am a man under authority. Only say the word. And so I just, I just believe in that that would be the case for, for you and me when, when he tells us, lay hands on the sick. Well, what if this doesn't happen this way? He didn't, he didn't tell you to assess and look for their head. He just told you what to do. Amen. Well, what if... It, so many times we, we tell the Lord, I'll do this if you do this. He doesn't work for you. I'll do this because you said so. I'll do this because you said so. I'll walk in love and I'll, I'll, and I'll honor and, and I'll... I'll I'll love my wife. I'll prefer her I'll, because you said so. Not because of anything else, but because of you saying so. And I, I just really believe the Lord's just doing a work in, in my heart, in, in, our, in our house, in his body. I, I've, 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 t- I've heard from so many different uh, pastors and, and just this, this just re- um, Direction to holiness, which is set apart. What do you say, Lord? And I believe it's just because God's turning his hearts, the hearts of the fathers back to his children and, 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 or, and, and children to the Father. And there's just this, Lord, teach me. Father, teach me. Teach me in the way I'm to go. Because things have gotten crazy. And you can't just assess tomorrow based on yesterday because tomorrow doesn't... Yesterday, <laughs> whoop, left turn. So, amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I'm not going to take time to go through Malachi. Um, 
But it is important. It is important what we're, how we view the Lord. And it is important how we view His Word and His precepts to us. And that they're not useless. You know, like, it's not whatever. One of the things it says in Malachi, it says, you, you sigh. You sigh at what you are asked to do for me. Here we go again. I don't see the point in this. I mean, look at all these people. Look at all that, and they're not even doing this. It's pointless. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. And the Lord said in the, the, the latter part of the book in Malachi 4, he said, Look, but those who feared, and this is what I would, this is so, for, for whatever reason, the word fear is so many times only, tra- only way we ever hear it is like being like deathly afraid instead of revered and honored. Like I'm talking the highest esteem. But he said, but those who held the Lord, who feared the Lord, who held him in this reverential awe, and just like, he said, they began to talk with one another about how good God is and, how, and what he's done for them and how it's only right and how he's worthy. And, and the Lord heard and he wrote, he began to write about them. Like, think about that. And I just believe that that's what he's wanting to do for you and me. Um, just continue to write and write the pages. Yeah, like First Samuel 2.30, those who honor me, I will honor. I mean, I just, he's began to write, you know, kind of like, you know, he can just kind of say, oh yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, we're going to flip that page to this now. We're going to flip that page to this now in their life. And they're going to, they're going to walk in that now. This, you know, I just, that's just, that I had that sensing uh, today. Let's stand today. Thank you, Lord. I, I, I love, um, and I'm, I'm, I, and I just, I know from my heart how I spoke today and what my heart desire was. Is, is not to be, uh, ha- have a word heard, and it would be cond- condemning. And if you're hearing condemnation, you're listening to the wrong spirit. Um, but it really is this, just this reflectiveness where I say, Lord, thank you for desiring so much for me to walk in the good things you prepared for me so much that you would come again and you'd come again and you'd come again and in a sense in a sense you'd risk it you'd risk it for me you'd risk me being offended with you to tell me the truth you'd risk me you'd risk me because that you want so bad for for, for, for me to walk in and, 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 and the things that you've prepared, that you'd risk it again. You'd risk it again. You'd come again. You'd say again. And that's just, I, I believe that's he just again coming and saying, hey, check out, check out what I asked you. Check out what I asked you. Check out what I said. Check out what I'm saying to you. Check out what it could be, rela- all those things. It's just, and just make that decision. Father, he, he might have told you to stop talking like that you're speaking fear and those kind of things and you in your house and you're you're giving place he said and he said stop it and you're thinking that because you can add these other things to it but he said no i need you to stop that but just make this decision today this this prayer of consecration and and i wanted to make the end prayer today um matthew chapter 6 and that's the Lord's Prayer. And it's this prayer of consecration, of surrendering, of our will to His. In this place of trust where we say, not, Father, let me win the lottery, but, Father, let me be dependent upon you today. Matthew chapter 6, this is when the disciples Ask the Lord to teach him how to pray. Matthew 6. Right here. There we go. So you can close your eyes. I mean, I'm going to, 
I'll let you maybe repeat the Lord's Prayer after me. Um, but I'm going to read it. And I'm going to, really, I'm going to pray it. And I just believe that today there'll be, a, this is an opportunity to consecrate our will to the Lord, our lives to Him. So our Father, who art in heaven, let your name be holy to me. Your kingdom come. Your will be done here on earth in me as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread and forgive us. Forgive me of my debts as I also, as we also forgive others. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. Mm, thank you, Lord. Deliver me from the evil one. Mm. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power forever. Father, today, I come under your word, and I rejoice over your word to me. It's not burdensome, but a delight. It's shining ahead of where I'm at. Thank you for loving me so much to not quit on me. Thank you for Jesus. We love you today, Father. We, we give you honor. Um, we thank you for the words that were spoken today. I just plead the, you, the, plead the blood of Jesus over them. I thank you that, um, Holy Spirit, that you'd even bring to remembrance the things, the, the little things, the that, that you spoke to hearts. And we just, uh, we, we say, Satan, you will not be able to snatch away one of your words that was brought to hearts today. Father, thank you that what, for this uh, place of increase and great things that are in store for this house, for these people. Thank you for just a place of your presence, your glory of testimony, and many, many families coming to know you and your goodness through these people. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Well, thank you. God bless you today. Um, if you need healing in your bodies or if you maybe here and you say, well, I, 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 prayed, I prayed and was giving my heart to the Lord, but I want to make sure that I'm born again. If that's you, I want to invite you up here, pray for your healing, whatever it might be. We're available up front. God bless you. We'll see you guys Wednesday night.